So Enterprise Ireland is a state organisation and we support, I suppose, startups <coughs> in the technology space. So um, Latifa asked me to give a kind of a brief talk and it's going to be briefer than, we, than you thought. So let's see, can I race through this now? Um, on a sort of the, what's available for startup businesses, technology startup businesses. So I'll just uh, run through here. So I was going to cover the supports from Enterprise Ireland, the startup e ecosystem here, and what we like to see as, as investors. So uh, we, because we're a state organisation, I suppose we, we invest in or we support certain types of businesses, and they have to be essentially exporting businesses. I mean, that's, that's the reason that the state put, um, puts money into Enterprise Ireland, because it's about um, sort of companies that export and grow and grow the economy. Um, we don't invest, and most investors won't, would be wary about investing in anything to do with tobacco, arms, adult entertainment, or gambling. So, uh, so anything in that space, um, certainly we wouldn't invest in. And they have to be what we call high potential. So we're looking for businesses that have potential to grow fairly significantly. And if their if they're smaller businesses are less likely to, to be, become significant businesses, the, uh, the local enterprise office is the, is the agency that deals with them. And when we say large businesses, we say typically we're talking about something that has the potential to do 10 employees within three or four years and sales of a million. Um, now, uh, most businesses don't make 10, but, but I suppose with a bit of, with a fair wind behind it, is this the sort of business that would, that would make 10 is, I guess, what we look at. And if it is, it's, it's Enterprise Ireland. So, so we look at baby businesses, uh, and we, we consider a startup to be uh, five years or less. So they're so businesses less than five years old. So uh, we're actually quite an entrepreneurial place, actually. Um, sort of we get about uh, 1,300 business propositions a year, and they're mainly tech businesses. Um, we take in, I suppose, kind of formal business plans to about 900. About half of them we'll put some money into. So we put some money into about 450 companies a year. Um, uh, 81 last year, but about 100 this year, we'll put 50,000 into. It's our called uh, Competitive Start Fund. And we do about 100 what we call seed investments. And that's about a quarter of a million per pop. So if you add, uh, you know, 250,000 by 100 gives us 25 million, and, you know, 100 by, by 50,000 gives us 5 million. So, um, so and the, the sectors we deal with, essentially, two-thirds of them are software, and, so and they tend to be kind of software, internet, media, games, apps, whatever, um, and then smaller in clean tech, consumer products, engineering, food, medical devices. And most of them are what we call B2B type uh, companies, so they're selling to other companies as opposed to selling to the consumer. The, the, a small proportion of them are actually B2C, where they're companies selling directly to the, to the consumer. And uh, the, the, sort of the, fold, the founders of the businesses, the big age for founders is in their 30s or in their 40s. So despite all this you know, these kind of, uh, kind of Silicon Valley type pictures, you know, of, uh, programs around starting businesses. It's a relatively small proportion of them are, are aged under 30. And, uh, um, the, and it's a kind of a male thing, actually, starting a tech business. Um, we have lots of programs to encourage more female entrepreneurs, and we're always looking for more female entrepreneurs, but, but um, it's still a very male-dominated world. In terms of the st uh, supports, so if you're thinking of starting this kind of a business, I suppose the question is, well, what's out there for you? And uh, our, I suppose, flagship program is called New Frontiers. And New Frontiers is run in essentially most of the institutes of technology around the country. I don't know if anyone has come, come across it. Has anyone come across New Frontiers? So essentially, it, it's got three parts. And the first part is, uh, is a kind of a four weekends or part-time where you go along and you try and pull together a kind of a business proposition in a, in a group. So it's, a, it's free, and it's, uh, the, the closest ones here would be Blanchestown, Tala, and DIT. So they run, th run this program, and, and, and they run a couple of times a year in, 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 the, in those institutions. So 400 uh, attend, attend the first phase, a phase, a phase of that, and then um, the, the, the part where we write the check, as it were, a serious check, is we put, uh, if you're taken on board for, on a six-month program, it's six-month full-time program, 
um, two days a week uh, sort of, you know, kind of study and kind of formal kind of program, and then three days working, uh, I guess, uh, in some sort of incubation space or, or shared working space to actually develop the business proposition. And we write a cheque of 2,500 a month uh, for six months, so that's 15,000. So essentially, it's a kind of a, a, a feasibility grant of 15,000 to help someone to actually develop a business proposition. Um, and uh, you get support from mentors and other, other supports to pull the thing together. Um, and because it's treated as a stipend, it actually is more tax efficient. So to some degree, um, it's tax free. So if you, if you took off your job to say, I'm going to do this over a six month period, you know, your, your tax allowance are spread over the whole year. So it actually means that it's actually worth, worth more, more to you. Um, the other uh, sort of support for a startup is what's called the uh, Competitive Start Fund. I don't know if you've ever come across the Competitive Start Fund. It's uh, an online application. You pitch to your computer screen there, and a seven minute pitch, essentially one minute on the product, one minute on the route to market, one minute on why would someone buy from you, one minute on uh, sort of the competition. And uh, it's, uh, we judge it, we, have, uh, we, we look at the applications, um, we uh, score the best 30, and the best 30 then do a kind of a dragon's den pitch to a panel of uh, sort of a dragons or entre entrepreneurs. And we have one on Monday, um, so 30 people will pitch their business propositions. It's a four minute pitch, and then four minute questions and answer all in one day. And, uh, and we'll invest in half them. So on Monday, we'll put 50,000 into 15 businesses. And we run that about every six weeks. So, so and if you're interested, why not, why not try? Um, if, you're, if you're thinking of something, something like this in terms of starting a business, this is probably you know, uh, kind of our, our biggest offer, I suppose, in terms of and we, we get the chances of you getting supported first time are slim-ish. We get, uh, for the 50K on, on, on Monday, we, uh, sorry, for the, for the 15 50Ks on Monday, um, 30 people will pitch, but we got something like 90 applications. So 90 applications are slimmed down to 30, and we put money into 15. So it's, it's, not, it's not impossible odds, but it is, it's competitive. And then there's also, we run a feasibility grant for, for early stage businesses. In Dublin, we try and discourage people from just, because there's something about a feasibility grant that becomes very attractive. I, you know, I've got a great idea, I want a grant. And we kind of try and encourage people to say, no, really, if you've got a great idea and you want to work it, we'd prefer you to, to spend some serious time doing it as opposed to giving you a grant for it. But, um, but certainly we give grants out and, we, and it depends, depending on the, on the situation. Um, and certainly outside Dublin, I guess, it's much easier to say, well, look, there isn't a new frontier as close to them. It makes more sense to give them a grant to themselves. And then we also run a sort of a innovation voucher, 5,000 euros to work with, a, and that's again, is an online application to work with a third level institution. And uh, if we decide to work with you, it isn't just about money. We do coaching, training. We link you to investors, to other investors. Um, so we have kind of various kind of diagnostics and self-scoring to try and identify where the project is weak. And we run kind of a developmental program, education programs to try and actually build out the proposition. And there are lots of other things as well that we try and do to, to, to grow the companies. We have a very strong mentor network, because I guess that's, that's hugely important if you're growing a business, you know, to have someone who, that you trust who actually has done it before or knows more than you do. So we have a strong uh, mentor panel, and there essentially would be uh, uh, people who are, who are given something back, I suppose, who want to who have experience in business. Um, we run sort of training programs at, at a various, we call, call them Excel, Excel at exporting, Excel at selling. Um, we have a global network around the world, so this taxpayer pays a lot of money to have um, offices around the world. So, we're, uh, so, so if you think I've got a business and there's potential to sell into the Russian market or what have you, we've got an office there. We, uh, we, pr we have um, these business innovation centers at Southeast Big, but there's actually one in Dublin called Dublin Business Innovation Center. It's funded by Enterprise Ireland. Essentially, it gives consultancy support, and have some very good consultants to help 
companies actually build up their business proposition. And then there's the, the local enterprise office, which is, deals with smaller, smaller companies. And, and there are various other, we won't go into them. So we run a, we run a sort of a, a program for female entrepreneurs. As I say, we're very keen to get more female entrepreneurs. Um, sort of, we run one with NDRC, NDRC. I don't know if anyone has come across NDRC. So it's, a, it's down near Guinness's. It's the National Digital Research Center. And it's a, a part-time program for, for people who are thinking of maybe making a jump or, or doing a program or trying to kind of, I suppose, get from the idea stage to something that's worth you know, making a personal investment in time or what have you into. Um, so so we, ru we run it with NGRC twice a year, I think. Um, we run a, a, a similar program with the, the Ryan Academy out in, in City West. Um, we run one in Cork, and we have a program called Going for Growth. I don't know if any of you have come across Going for Growth. Again, it's a kind of a female business network to actually help pr uh, female promoters to kind of, I suppose, uh, build, build their business propositions. But um, I, I guess when you talk about Enterprise Ireland, you know, I, I'm kind of, I think of, of us, but actually we're only a small part of what's happening out there in the startup environment. There's a whole slew of accelerators and incubators, incubator, and I won't even go into them, but I mean, if, but I suppose this is just to give you a kind of feel for what's out there. There's innumerable events and startup events and meetups in Dublin every single week. So if you think you're, you're this is something I'd like to know more about or do some work on or get, have an interest, um, believe me, if you Google, you'll find that, that any given night there's half a dozen things on. Um, there's co-working space around the place. And I suppose in our experience, if you're starting off as a single business, um, uh, working you know, with others, is an awful lot stronger than actually trying to do it in your own, in your bedroom. And uh, a great way of starting, uh, uh, kind of, I suppose, approving your idea is there are loads of competitions for startups. So get out there and put it up there. And at the very least, you will get kind of feedback in terms of, you know, how do you strengthen the, pr the proposition? And apart from Enterprise Ireland, there's a whole slew of funding opportunities out there. So we are we're a uh, sort of relatively large, I suppose, individual organization, but, uh, but, but there's, we're only a drop in the ocean, really, when it comes to the, inv the investment uh, sort of that's out there for decent business propositions. But actually, the, the, I suppose, the difficulty, because these tend to deal with projects that actually could, you know, are looking for at least 100,000, because the cost of actually, you know, uh, dealing with very small amounts of money the administrative cost is so, is so large. So at the very early stage, I suppose, um, really, if you're looking for less than, than, than you know, 20, 30,000, know, that's a hard place to get money. And typically, it comes from family and friends. Hi. Come in. You're, it's great. You're near, it's nearly over. You're, it's nearly <laughs> lunchtime. So you're actually going to get ahead here now. <laughs> family, friends. I guess the, uh, the 50K Competitive Start Fund. Um, there's a, an outfit called um, Business Angel Network. So there are business angels around who are interested in putting small amounts of money into in interesting propositions. And something like you know, you know, less than 50,000 is doable in, with a business angel uh, context. Uh, um, the, uh, the revenue commissioners uh, sort of give you uh, sort of, if you're paying PAYE, um, sort of, and you're prepared to, to, to go into a sort of a, a business, uh, sort of you can get credit for the tax you paid in previous years to, uh, to, if it's invested into a, into a startup business. And there's always the, uh, the Monty Burnses of this world who might be interested in, in you as a, as a business proposition. Then, then there's lots of other, other things there. So uh, what we look for, oh, I, I guess this is nearly me over now, but just let me uh, sort of, uh, I think Latifa there is beginning to get worried that I actually won't stop talking. Are you Latifa? <laughs> okay, so, uh, so what do we look for? I suppose a lot of people come to us and say, I've got a great idea. But actually a great idea is, is just the start. And a, we wouldn't put money into a great idea and very few people will put money into a great idea. Mm -hmm. Because, as in, I, we, had, uh, we had one that is sort of there, I, I'm, I, I just, it's just in my head because we invested in it over the last week, um, and it was a kind of an Airbnb for dogs, as in kind of mind your pets kind of, a, kind of a thing, kind of smart, 
you say, yeah, I'm sort of, uh, rather than put my money in the kennels, let's see other people who've been willing to take in dogs and charge and they can, you can have all sorts of whatever. But actually, and that's, that's the sort of idea, I guess, that people would have in pubs all the time. Um, but actually, the question is, can you actually convert it into a business? And for us, I suppose you also need a team because if you've got a, a kind of a business and you're saying, well, I'd, uh, I, you know, an Airbnb for dogs. But the question is, okay, that's going to require kind of computer programming. Who's going to do that? Well, I can employ. But actually, you know, if you're going to start employ, employing all the people to actually do what's needed there, it isn't really going to fly. You can never fund it. So in action, it really has to be someone who, who understands if there's a tech development, there has to be a tech developer on the team. Um, to say we can actually buy that in, is actually, it never really works. Um, you need to have someone who can kind of sell, who can sell the business, who can sell, who can raise money, who can, who can, who can sell it, you know, who can sell the concept. Um, and you need some um, sm money, now small amounts of money, I'm going to leave that out, um, because I suppose we're great believers in this whole kind of lean startup idea. And the real kind of thing is, what's the minimum amount of money that can actually prove this is, an I this is, a, this is a viable idea? And actually, for most, most things, you know, with, with a couple of thousand and, and smarts, you can actually prove a lot as to whether this, is, this has enough legs to actually get to the next stage. And the next stage maybe is, you know, 20,000. But if you've, if you've kind of proven the first bit, raising the... So, so I suppose it's a bit like, you know, that how do you eat an elephant? You know, you, you eat it in very small slices. So we'd be strong believers that, that you'd grow a business by... Um, I suppose, taking it in, in small steps as opposed to thinking, I need, need 200,000 to do my Airbnb for dogs. Everyone would just say, go away. Whereas if you said, no, I've got this really smart idea and I've got two people who are going to do this and they're going to do it part time. But actually, you know, if I had a couple of thousand, I could actually do some sort of a minimal viable product and I could <laughs> do it in Clondalkin and I could show that actually people are willing to. And then suddenly you've kind of, you've got, you get to the next stage. That's kind of how it works. Anyway, I've, uh, come on, you, you're dying for me to stop. <laughs>